there guys. Uh, ben here again with the Easy Review. Uh, today I just wanted to talk to you about my evil minion. Uh, today I decided I'd show a little bit more face than I usually do. And uh, I just feel the, the videos are a little impersonal when I don't show my face and just my chunky little fingers. Um, I said I'd do a review of the evil minion. You know, I've already done a review of my DM. And by the way, if you guys had noticed in the previous videos, uh, I have an engraving done on there and it says Santa's gift and that's because uh, at my field I'm known as Santa and uh, so this is like Santa's little bag of gifts right here you know gift 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 so let's go over my evil minion and unfortunately being that it's a uh, an 06 or an 07 still can't remember which one it is there's not a whole lot of new technology in this it's an older gun older technology uh, but so an amazing gun like if you watch my budget baller episode I talked about why this you know guns like this you know older guns are still worth owning um, you know definitely for a beginning player so let's just talk about I guess first we'll go over the OLED uh, this gun like if you meant if you heard in my other video it's got an OLED. I bought this gun for $135. It's got a Virtue OLED board in it. And unfortunately, the ASA, I called it regulator multiple times in the other video that annoyed me because I know it's not a regulator, it's an ASA. Um, the ASA did not come with the gun because it was attached to the guy's tank. So I had to buy a regulator for $40. An ASA for $40. And uh, so I've got $175 total invested into this gun. And to those of you who know about these things, you know I can probably get 200 or 254 if I were to resell. And since there, you know, not too many of them on the market, uh, it makes them a little bit slightly more collectible. Uh, they're not exactly a collector's gun, but uh, these were a lot like the DM sixes and DM sevens when they came out. They actually basically are modeled off the DM six and DM seven. So there's a huge amount of similarities in the frames. Uh, and this one actually does have an ultralight, uh, an ultralight back, or ultralight grip, sorry. So, you know, let's go over just, you know, firing rate of this gun. Now, I did use it during tournament play. Uh, I'm actually going to stuff this, because I'm going to try to make this as quiet as possible. Uh, I use it, sorry, not during tournament play, but I did play speedball with it, and it was a great gun. The only thing I noticed is a little gas hog, so I'm at... 3.5k on the air tank. It's not filled up all the way because I had to go get a leak fixed earlier today. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how this fires. And that took out about 1k uh, on the air. And so... I'm not really sure how many pods that was. Obviously, I didn't put any pods through it, but uh, I'd, I'd estimate around three pods, possibly two, and that was, you know, a thousand, uh, a thousand psi. Sorry. One cool thing about this gun, I've already turned the eyes back on, so there'll be no accidental fires. Uh, one cool thing about the OLED, it comes with its, well, it comes with drills. Um, now I'm going to try and make sure you can see this as well as possible. Uh, now let's get that focus. Okay, so that right there is a laning drill. Um, and really, it just kind of counts your shots. Uh, they all have their own descriptions. If you look up uh, Virtue Board Drills, they have descriptions of all of them. But it does come with a whole bunch of drills, like the gun up drill, it gives you a, it'll give you a timer, so like, a, let's, it'll say, please wait for the beep, and I believe this one's, you know, five to nine seconds, and it'll give you a noise, and you gotta pull the trigger really fast. Um, I have the eyes on, so it won't actually register my trigger pulls, because there's supposed to be a ball in it. Um, so let's see. We got the reload practice, it'll give you a timer, then you just reload. Uh, obviously this one really can't measure anything. It's just assuming, you know, you know how to stop it after you put your pot in. And this one's, uh, 
reload monitor. I actually can't remember what that one does. I honestly don't use many of these drills. The only one I really ever use is the gun up to practice, you know, uh, you know, obviously getting my gun up. And uh, it's got a front drill. Can't remember what that one does. It's got the ollie drill. Once again, can't remember what it does. And then there's the Russian Legion drill. And you'll never guess, but I can't remember what it does. And then we go back to... Oh, wait, no, there's a breakout drill. I forgot about that one. Um, it measures... I think this one measures how many shots you can get off the off a, a breakout. And uh, if you guys remember, they used to be... I think they banned it now, but there's... There used to be something called a, a breakout mode. It's actually on this board, I know. Uh, it shoots full auto off of the first trigger pull and then resets to like semi or PSP I can't remember which one after the second trigger pull and That's so you can shoot as much pain as possible with as little effort as possible off the break and I believe most tournaments now ban that because obvious reasons it's supposed to be a challenge to shoot your enemies and Yeah, then we're back to nothing no drills nothing regular Regular old gun. So let's get back out. But yeah, the one I like this gun. It's really light. Uh, it's got a good feel to it. The one thing I don't like, obviously, it's got a macro line. And if you remember from my other video, this one comes out to the right. It doesn't go straight down the middle, and that's because of the regulator. It's not made to go straight into it. And obviously, it's not a gas through frame, so it's going to have to have a macro line. Uh, other than that, this is actually a pretty amazing gun. My friend who introduced me to the sport, uh, paintball, that was the, like the, an evil minion was the first gun that he had. His didn't have an OLED. Um, I think it was an 07. It was blue. And ever since then, I kind of wanted one. Uh, after I bought my DM, a few weeks went by, and then I bought this evil minion because I found it for 135 I was like, wow, that's a steal. So <laughs> I'm going to take that. And now I've got my beloved evil minion um it came with a cp barrel not this not this boomy that i have on it now um and by the way if you're looking for a new barrel like honestly the only time you should ever really be looking for a new barrel that didn't come with your gun is if you have a mini or i think some of like not not the axe pros but the regular axes mini gs's regular minis and axes i think they all have kind of crappy stock barrels if i remember correctly um so the only time you should really be looking for a new barrel is if you have one of those. And a good cheap barrel to get is a CP barrel. They run about $40 new and they're just as good as ultralights. Obviously they're not as light, but they're just as good. They work just as well. Um, and I think they do sell a two-piece, but there's really no point in getting a two-piece when you can just get a $40 one-piece. Uh, if you don't have the money, that is. Um, I much prefer two-piece barrels. They're easier for storage um, whenever you're packing up at the end of the day. It's a lot easier to just break your barrel down into two pieces and then put it in your case. Uh, I mean, so I've got this, I got the DM case, and I like to be able to stick my barrels in the little loops here instead of having to pack it up and, and put it in my gear bag. I don't like having it kind of float around in the gear bag. But uh, yeah, that's, that's my minion. Um, so I hope this uh, may open your eyes a little bit as to you know what evil minions are like. Know that they're a high quality gun. They still compete with DMs. They can, you can shoot just as well with this as a DM14. Uh, when I first bought the gun, like I said, I went out and played speedball with it all day. My only real issue, like I said, was that it used up a lot of air. And that could be uh, something else. It may not necessarily be the gun's fault. It, it, since it's an older gun, the previous owner may have done something to it. Uh, and also, so I didn't shoot paint through it, but um, the gun is tuned, so it actually shoots really smooth. Uh, obviously, it's a lot louder when there's no paint going through, but when this thing shoots paint, it's crazy smooth. I love it. Um, so, yeah. And also, for those of you uh, who watched the Budget Baller episode, I mentioned that uh, I'm a bigger guy, as you can obviously see. Uh, I mentioned that I fours cover my face completely, so anybody who may have been doubting that, uh, you know, all you can see is my forehead. And usually, uh, if I'm out on my own home field and I'm not in a speedball tournament, I'm wearing a Santa hat. So it's my bounce hat. As you can see, nothing's really exposed. 
even when I open up my mouth, like all the way, nothing really gets exposed and mask fits me perfectly. So this is kind of just a little demonstration to prove to you that I force can fit on anybody. It's really just about, it's more genetics that cause the issue of I force than anything. Uh, and I say genetics because it's really just the length of your face. My face is not a long, I don't have a long face. Um, you know, some people, you know, their face comes down to like here, of course. It's hard to visualize that, but uh, that's pretty much the only time you're ever going to have an issue with I-4s. And in that case, I'd recommend going to Vios or, you know, get the Vio Extends. And honestly, Vio Extends are kind of a cheaper version of the mask, but they do cover this whole bottom area. So, that's that. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, leave any comments, suggestions, or if you found some kind of flaw in the video about what I said, uh, definitely let me know. I, I want to make sure I've got all my facts straight. Sometimes I make an error without realizing it. Thanks for watching, guys.